Chapter 4, The Most Important Man in the World. Luckily, Friday went by smoothly. Sorry to say, Saya didn't raise her hand, but Heidi Hooper did. Amazing! AJ actually whispered, Richie cleaned my cage. I tried to imagine him with a big black mustache, like his Uncle Aldo. Later, when Mrs. Brisbane asked him to name the capital of Kentucky, Richie said, Hot dog! Everyone giggled, of course, especially Stop Giggling Gail, otherwise known as Gail Morgenstern. Repeat that, please, Richie, said the teacher. Richie realized he made a mistake, so he tried again. Frankfurter, he said. More giggles. Explosive giggles. Try again, Richie, said Mrs. Brisbane, who was on the verge of smiling herself. Uh, Frankfurt, he said proudly. That was the correct answer. By the way, so you see, it wasn't exactly a bad day in room 26. It's just that I was jittering, wondering what would happen to me when the bell rang. Would I be left alone, hungry, utterly forsaken for two whole days, or would I be a captive in the haunted house of Mrs. Brisbane? At last, the bell rang and the students flew out of the door like a flock of homing pigeons in a movie Miss Mac showed us. Just then, the room mother stopped by. One was Heidi Hooper's mom and the other one was Art Patel's. That's pay attention, Art. They came to talk to Mrs. Brisbane about Halloween, which was less than two weeks away. I didn't know what Halloween was, but it sure sounded scary, especially when they talked about bringing bats and witches and even worse, cats, right into the classroom. Shiver, quiver, shake. What could they be thinking? I was about ready to fling open the door of my cage and escape when the door opened and in walked the principal, Mr. Morales. Mr. Morales is the most important person at Longfellow School. He runs, in the, he runs the place that everyone respects him. You can tell. For one thing, Mr. Morales always wears a tie. No one else in the whole school wears a tie except Mr. Morales. For another thing, when Mr. Morales comes into the room, everyone stops what they're doing and waits to see what he has to say. For a third thing, both Miss Mack and Mrs. Brisbane sometimes threaten to send misbehaving students to Mr. Morales' office. As soon as the teacher mentioned the principal's name, the students would start acting very, very nice. Good afternoon, ladies, said Mr. Morales. He was wearing a light blue shirt and a tie that had tiny books all over it. Everyone said, hello. Well, how was your first week back, Sue? He asked. Sue was apparently Mrs. Brisbane, although I never actually thought of her having a first name before. She said it was great to be back and what a wonderful class it was, which obviously pleased the room mothers. Then, Mr. Morales leaped over my cage and smiled. His tie dangled right over my head. I'll bet you're enjoying this furry little pupil, he said with a grin. I expected Mrs. Brisbane to tell him what a trouble-making rodent I was, but instead she forced a smile and said, Well, yes, he's quite a bit of extra work. Mr. Morales waved a finger at me. He didn't seem to hear what Mrs. Brisbane said. I always wanted one of these fellows, he said, but my papa wouldn't let me have one. Sure is cute. Mrs. Brisbane cleared her throat. Yes, but I'm afraid he's a little distracting. I was going to see if Mr. Kim in room 12 wants him. I was shocked. Luckily, so were the other mothers. Oh no, the children just love Humphrey, said Mrs. Patel. Heidi talks about him all the time, and it's a wonderful way to teach the kids responsibility, Mrs. Hooper said. Yes, but it's a little too much responsibility for me, Mrs. Brisbane sighed. At least I have a couple days away from him this weekend. You're not taking him home with you, said Mrs. Patel. Mrs. Brisbane backed away from the cage. Oh no, it's out of the question. But Miss Mack always took him home, said Mrs. Hooper. He'll be fine. He has plenty of food, said Mrs. Brisbane, and she answered very, very firmly. The room mothers were silent a second. Mr. Morales was still wiggling his finger at me. Then Mrs. Hooper spoke up. Why don't the kids take turns bringing Humphrey home for the weekend? They can sign up. We'll talk to their parents and give them instructions. It will be a great experience. Some people might not want him, said Mrs. Brisbane. Speak for yourself, said Mrs. Brisbane. That's fine, said Mrs. Hopper. There'll be plenty who will. I think it's great, Mrs. Patel agreed. I take him today, but we're going up to the lake for the weekend. Oh, I take him too, says Mrs. Hooper, but we're painting the house and the place is a mess next week for sure. Yes, I could do it next week, Mrs. Patel agreed. 
Mrs. Brisbane smiled, a fake smile. So who's gonna take him this weekend? The room mothers looked at one another. I can make a few quick calls. Maybe the Rinaldi's, Mrs. Patel suggested. Call, 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 I squeaked. Suddenly, Mr. Morales stood up straight. Oh, I have a better idea, he announced. I'll take Humphrey home for the weekend. My kids will love him. Then, starting next week, you can have your students take turns. The three women were almost as surprised as I was. Don't worry, he'll be in good hands, Mr. Morales assured them. Well, I guess I would be. After all, I was going home with the most important person in Longfellow's school. As he drove me to his house, Mr. Morales told me how he'd always wanted a hamster when he was a kid. But his dad always said they didn't need another mouth to feed. I argued with them. Humphrey, I said, Papa, I will feed him off my own plate. Then Poppy said we'd have to buy a cage and stuff to put in it. I guess he was right, Humphrey. We couldn't afford it. He smiled a big smile, but not anymore. Now I'm the principal of my own school. I told you he was important. His house was nice, but I didn't get to see much of it because as soon as we came in the door, two little whirlwinds tumbled into the room, shrieking and squealing. Quiet down, you'll frighten the little fella, Mr. Morales told them. He got that right. He introduced us. The little boy, who was about five, was named Willie. He kept poking his fingers through the wires of the cage. I was about to bite him, pure instinct, but then I remembered. This is the son of the most important person at Longfellow School, so I did it. The little girl who was about seven was named Brenda. She kept sticking up her face against the cage and squealing. I tried squeaking back at her, but I don't think she could hear me. Mr. Morales tried to quiet them down. He explained that I was a guest for the weekend and that they had to treat me with respect. They didn't listen. The pretty lady rushed through the room, jingling her car keys. I'm late. I have to show a house. She glanced in my direction. We'll talk about that later. Adios. Mr. Morales wished her luck and she was gone. Then he carried me into the den with Willie and Brenda clinging to his legs and yelping. My cage was swinging back and forth so much, I was getting air sick or cage sick. Mr. Morales set my cage on the table in their family room. Now, get back and listen to me, he told his children. I'll tell you all about him. Can we take him out, screamed Willie. Can we put him into my room, shouted Brenda. Can he sleep with me tonight? We can't do anything until you settle down, Mr. Morales said. Bravo, Mr. Morales, I thought. But still, the children didn't listen. The most important person at Longfellow's school was not treated with respect in his own house. Willie lurched forward and swung open the cage door. Oh, there's poo in here, he screamed. Where, where, shrieked Brenda. Willie pointed to my potty corner and I thought it was unsqueakably rude of him. I want to hold him, said Brenda, grabbing me. She squeezed me so hard I let out a squeal. Stop, said Mr. Morales, put him back right now. She opened her hand and dropped me onto the floor of my cage. Luckily, I landed in a pile of my soft bedding. Luckily, I didn't land in my poop. I was a little dizzy, but I heard Mr. Morales send Willie and Brenda to their rooms. I will not allow you to mistreat an animal. Upstairs, door shut, no point until I say you can, he said. Suddenly, Mr. Morales didn't look so important. He slumped down in the chair next to my cage and loosened his tie. Now you know my secret, Humphrey. At school, everybody listens to me. At home, nobody listens to me, he said. Mr. Morales looked tired, tired, tired. Above our heads came the sounds of thumping and bumping. It sounded as if the ceiling was about to fall in. They're bouncing on their beds, Humphrey. They're not supposed to do that either, he said. He slowly rose and went to the stairway in the hall. Willie, Brenda, stop that now, he yelled. Surprisingly, the thumping and the bumping stopped. They listened. I squeaked when the principal sat down, but the thumping and bumping began again in a minute. I wish I knew what to do, he said. Some way to teach them a lesson. I nodded. A lesson is just what those children needed, and I was the hamster to teach them. Tip four, never ever squeeze, pinch, or crush a hamster. If it runs away, squeals, or mutters, Leave the hamster alone. Man.